Welcome back to the Bee Cave Book Hall. I'm Kate Sweeney and I'm the Public Services Manager here at the Bee Cave Public Library and I am so excited to welcome back to our studio for perhaps a final time um, our favorite patron Ryan Bear. Well, we have lots of favorite patrons. We love you, all you patrons, but we love Ryan Bear. She reads so much and she talks about books, so how can you not love her? Um, anyway, so she's um, come to talk to us about some of her... Um, can I say favorite band books? Or are they just band books that you find interesting? These are actually new to me. All okay. But, all but one were new to me. Um, so I'm reading them from the eyes of a parent who's going to have readers uh, eventually, like in the near future. Um, so consider it maybe pre-screening of band books for my Ooh, littles. <laughs> pre-screening for band books for her littles, um, who are still kind of in the toddler stages at this yes. point. Um, but they are, they are reading. I, I can tell from, uh, your Instagram account. They're always with books. Um, anyway, so we have a handful of books. So w normally we talk about brand new books, you know, new to the library and stuff like that. These we're going to kind of do some throwbacks to some classics because, um, that's what banned books is all about is revisiting, um, favorites that people had a problem with at some point. So We'll go ahead and launch right in. What have you got for us, Ryan? Uh, well, something that most of these books that I selected have in common, they're juvenile fiction or young adult. Uh, there are a lot of award winners in there, and not just one or two awards, but like the big awards, the Newbery, yeah. um, Sequoia, and whatnot. Um, and also, several of them have been turned into movies. So if you're a family who must read the book before you see the movie, um, especially one of my the last books that I read, Wrinkle in Time, it is coming out in March 2018, and the previews are awesome. So I'll dive right in with the first book, Mr. Popper's Penguins. Oh, yes. That's a classic we all know. Yes. And uh, that one is a Newbery Award winner. Uh, there wasn't... I did a little bit of research on the books and why they were banned or challenged. This one really it was questionable. Keeping penguins as pets is unrealistic. The book is whimsical and imaginative. Um, I wouldn't want to give too much away about it, um, but ultimately, uh, Mr. Popper receives a penguin as a gift from Admiral Drake, and it's sort of about how his family kind of changes as a result of having a penguin as a pet, and then it grows not from just one or two, but to 12 penguins, and then they take the show on the road. So that one is, it's really fun. It's super appropriate for uh, beginning chapter readers, and there's a Jim Carrey movie adaptation Oh of it my gosh, I forgot about that. That That's we true. watched. Uh, that one's definitely not going to win any awards, <laughs> but it's fun, and it's funny, and it's it's appropriate for the entire family. Mm -hmm. um, so I enjoyed that one. My son Dashiell really liked the illustrations from oh, the book. Yeah. And, um, and he got to a point where he would respond to me when I was making the penguin noises. Uh -huh. So there's like ork and goop and uh -huh. that sort of thing. And um, So a good read aloud. Yes. It was, it was a lot of fun and interactive. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that was kind of my So experience. banned for fantastical reasons? Yeah. Okay. Just, like who who has penguins as pets? Uh -huh. Who turn like who turns their basement into a skating rink uh -huh. or their refrigerator into their refrigerator and freezer into a home for a penguin? Uh -huh. Sort of thing. People so, just could not handle that. No, at the at the time it was probably a little too like extreme for some readers. Uh -huh. Um and my my next one um, was another book that I hadn't read yet by Judy Bloom. And something interesting that I found out about her is that she's the second most banned author. Um, yeah, her yeah. stuff a, a lot of times ends yes, up on the list. Um, a few of the other titles, Forever, Dini, Blubber, Then Again, Maybe I Won't, those have all been banned. Blubber was banned. I don't remember that. That's yeah. interesting. So one of the really cool, I, um, I found a really neat quote by her um, that I think... If you have a beginning reader or um, even like your kids in high school, um, she said, let children read whatever they want and then talk about it with them. If parents and kids can talk together, we won't have as much censorship because we won't have as much fear. Um, I think that quote isn't just appropriate for reading right now, mm -hmm. but for life in general. So I thought that was really neat. Um, but Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. Um, deals with real life issues. It's a guide for young girls that is kind of appropriate even now, um, you know, probably like 30 years after she wrote the book. Um, it's about growing up. 
There's some really heavy themes in it, though, um, for a sixth grade girl, um, like choosing her own religion. Mm-hmm. She's not raised any religion. Her, she has one parent who is raised Jewish, another who is raised Catholic. And so the choice is ultimately up to her. And so throughout the book, at the end of the chapter, she's writing letters to God. Um, some of it is like, am I doing the right thing? Give me a sign. I was at this church or I was at temple. And mm-hmm. um, But then there's also the uh, sort of the themes that you get in sixth grade, going through puberty, talking about boys, uh, you know, articles of clothing you're going to need for the first time, how your body's changing. Um, but instead of... Almost like an FAQ for, like, puberty yes. and stuff like that. Yeah, and there were parts that, that made me cringe because I remember uh-huh. experiencing that uh-huh. myself. And then there were other times when um, when I was just so appreciative of Judy Bloom and her writing a book like this and sort of and 30 years ago yes yeah um but one of the problems I think with uh with banning books like this is um that you're isolating people and and sort of making it so that um they should have a fear of asking questions about like what what your body is going through like um, right yeah she's writing about decisions that people have to make um how important it is to be educated and not isolated and and I think that that's really important, especially at an age like middle grade, when you're starting to have more questions and you want to have resources and people to turn to. And, and sometimes kids, their, their way of experiencing or educating themselves is through literature. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so um, I really appreciated that, that she wrote that book and also that I got to read it as an adult. Yeah. And, um, and just recognize that some of the themes were maybe still relevant um, today. And I just love how you said, you know, it's like cringeworthy at times. So often when you read a book that's really honest about those years, um, those awkward, just excruciating, like socially excruciating years of middle school and adolescence, I mean, that just completely yes. encapsulates. Like, there's a part where she's in a little secret club and they have to write about their their boy list Uh the boys that they like and then it needs to change and then they all have secret names and I'm like oh my goodness this was this was me in fifth or sixth grade this is the roadmap (laughs) for my life yeah absolutely Uh, my next book that I read is another Newbery Award winner and it uh, is The Great Gilly Hopkins by Katherine Patterson oh yeah so some people recognize her for Bridge to Terabithia Mm -hmm. another book that I hadn't read and also another book that uh, has recently been adapted into a film I believe um, Kathy Bates is in the movie I think it's on Netflix oh wow Um, but this book this particular book was banned um, several times in different school districts for profanity taking the Lord's name in vain um, but um, and something that's really relevant today, um, Gilly is in the foster care system. So it talks about the accuracy of the foster care system. Some of the critics have discussed accuracy of the foster care system, but also how Gilly treats uh, people of a different race mm-hmm. um, and her treatment and prejudice against two of the main characters, one of whom is the next door neighbor and another who is her teacher. Um, But some of the redeeming parts of this book, I think, are that it shows Gilly's strengths and weaknesses and sort of how she is the one who is responsible for the changes in her life Um, and how her attitude toward her neighbor and her teacher changes. And by the last two pages of the book, I was ugly crying Mm -hmm. uh, because she definitely, just in the course of, 180 pages you see how the character changes and grows and oh, so satisfying too and it reminds me sort of of uh, of individuals that have like a tough exterior mm-hmm. and someone gives them or shows them love and just kind of how that changes them and how they blossom and grow over time and in this book it's maybe the course of a few months mm-hmm. but just having being able to grow up in the right environment makes all the difference. Yeah. So um, that makes me think of Maniac McGee a little bit, that Jerry Spinelli. I read that so long ago. Yeah, I yeah. Can't it's a it. it's similar thing of, you know, a kid that's really struggling through and um, tough exterior, all that kind of stuff, but you see a real arc over the course of the novel. But this this book hit me in the feels. 
<laughs> Especially uh-huh. right That's now. so satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> um, another of my middle grade selections, um, I'll move on to Harriet the Spy. Um, this is something that I read when I was younger. It's, it's fun. It's sort of exciting, but it was banned because Harriet is a bad example for kids. Yeah. <laughs> spying on people. Yes. Encur- like a hooligan. Yes. Encouraging spying, lying, swearing, um, talking back to her Up elders. To no good. Yes. Um, behaviors and character attributes that are considered unsavory, especially at the time period because the book was written in the 60s. Um, definitely not a young lady. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hard to like hear with a straight face. But yeah. something that, especially right now, um, we're trying to to teach young women to grow up and be independent and strong. And and part of the reason why I chose a few of these books is because I have a daughter, mm-hmm. and Harriet, she's an independent achiever, and she takes action to achieve her goals, um, breaking social norms. And this book received backlash. For having a female character who um, who takes charge of her life mm-hmm. and does her own thing. And this was in the 60s and people weren't really interested in women taking charge of their own lives mm-hmm. in the 60s. Um, so Harriet was definitely um, not society's idea the of, a, of a young lady <laughs> like 1964 or thereabouts. Um, so you have one last um, read for us. I do. And this one was... Probably of the five banned books that I read, uh, Wrinkle in Time might be one of the first books that I've ever said that I can see myself reading this multiple times. Mm -hmm. I I know it's kind of a mind bender for one thing. For some people, like Jane Austen is uh, an author that they go to for comfort. I think um, that Madeline Langle might be one of my new authors. Mm -hmm. And it's funny to say that because this book was also written in the 60s. So Uh this, I mean, the book was already over 20 years old when I was born. So Uh um, withstood the test of time. Absolutely. Another Newbery Award winner. It also won a Sequoia Award, a Lewis Carroll Award. Um, No surprise, number 22 in the American Library Association's 100 Most Banned Books between 1990 and 2000. Wow. There are lots of different elements happening in this book, um, sort of supernatural. There are allegations of witchcraft, demons, and crystal balls. Mm -hmm. But some people also objected to the use of Jesus Christ in relation to other artists, philosophers, scientists, and religious leaders. Um, they said that it undermined religious beliefs. I would categorize this book as like science fiction fantasy. It made my heart flutter. Like Mm -hmm. I got nervous, like, you know, the sweaty palms and Uh heart racing. And, um, I actually read this book in a day. It's about 240 pages. Uh, Good news. It's the first book in a quintet. Uh So it definitely. You have somewhere to go next. Oh, goodness. Yeah. And. If you're like me, I if I'm nearing the end of a book and I know it's in a series and the, the next book is out, I usually reserve the next book before it uh, before I'm finished with the current book. Um, so you have it at the ready? Yes, absolutely. So that there's no like hang time in between. And, um, book hangovers are painful. Yes. Um, so I usually have something light and fluffy afterwards uh-huh. <laughs> to yeah. cure you. To com- com- console yourself. But um, something that this book had in common with the other, a few of the other banned books is a strong female protagonist. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Uh, Meg Murray is the protagonist in this book, and her task throughout the book is to rescue her brother and dad. And it's really interesting to see uh, over the course of the book how she sees herself, she sees her weaknesses and how they become her strengths. And uh, one of the main themes in the book is love and the power that love has on an individual. And it's something that she has that in this other world that she encounters that they don't have. Um, So like this book, I kind of want to go back and read it over again (laughs) today it's such an ambitious novel there's so much going on in it I mean like you're saying there's philosophers and religion and like time travel it's a that's a big thing to take on it's super ambitious um I for one am so grateful that I read it as an adult instead of as like middle grade or interesting yeah young adult because I think at the time I might not have 
had the tools in my reading arsenal to mm-hmm. to fully comprehend or grasp or even appreciate it. Yeah. Um, because I think that this is, um, I, I don't know that I would consider this middle grade. I think um, maybe like young adult, it might be more suitable, um, especially if you're considering some of the themes um, mm-hmm. or very advanced middle grade. But uh, if you have an opportunity to check out the um, the YouTube preview of the movie, it has some of your heavy hitters like Reese Witherspoon and Oprah Winfrey mm-hmm. and um, Chris Pine. You might recognize him from some of the other like action movies lately. And um, so, um, so I will definitely be excited to see the movie adaptation. Um, because it has a lot to live up to. Yes. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. So those are my Fantastic. five fans reads for so the month of September. anyone is feeling subversive, here are five great options to celebrate Banff Book Week. But we wanted to wish y'all a happy book day before we say goodbye. And thanks for coming in, Ryan. Thank you. The BK Book Hall is part of the BK Public Library's podcast channel. It is produced and edited by Megan Fisher. Thanks to the friends of the BK Public Library for the donation of our podcast equipment. For more information, go to www.bktexas.com. Please feel free to email us or leave any comments and suggestions below. We'd love to hear from you.